Hello everybody, let's get a little bit of background before we start our lab. So obviously we're going to talk about friction today. It is a pull or a push, a force that is necessary. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. We want more force when and more friction when we are driving on an icy snowy road so that we have more friction so we don't slide. But we want less friction if you're an ice skater and you want to be able to glide beautifully. So we're going to see how surfaces, so which surface, um, and I'll walk you through those in a second, is going to have the most amount of friction force. So a hypothesis, remember, should be in the correct format if uh, independent variable, then dependent variable, because, give me a reason. Let's walk her through our materials. You're going to get a shoe, a spring scale, and some various surface materials. Um, just a note, your shoe should be labeled with your lab station number, and also your spring scale should be numbered with your lab station number. Now I know in your directions it talks about the bag of sand, that you want to take the mass of the bag of the sand, as well as the mass of the shoe. I'm going to save you guys a step, because I didn't really want bags of sand flying all over the place. So somewhere you should find the mass of your shoe and the mass of your bag of sand so you can put those all together. All right, your surfaces that you have to work with today. This one is carpeting. It is a rather thick carpeting. You can see it's smushy. Your second kind of material is a ceramic floor tile. Your third material is a plastic um, floor tile. We have some sandpaper and we have some shorter pile carpet notice it's not so squishy and if that carpeting looks familiar it's because it's from the library so here are your surfaces again so long pile carpet tile plastic tile sandpaper carpeting okay your job then is to record the amount of force it takes to get your shoe moving so here's your shoe you should have a clip attached to the front of it that is handy for your spring scale to attach. A note about your spring scales, make sure you are using the side that is in newtons. You also should have a side that measures grams or dynes. You want to make sure that you are using the newton side. And you're going to record the amount of force it takes to get your shoe moving. So just as an example, put it on your surface, hook it up. Now obviously I can get this to like jump and make all sorts of crazy stuff happen. That's not what we're shooting for because obviously that's going to change your newtons uh, quite a bit if you pull and tug. The object is you just want to get it so that your shoe just starts to move. So right about there would be when I would take a measurement. Okay, Not when it's moving really, really fast, but just as it starts to move is when you want to take your measurement. Okay. You are not going to change which shoe you have. You are not going to change which spring scale you have because that would obviously be introducing more variables. And we want to keep the variable that we are testing to our surface, right? So that's what we're going to change. Everything else should stay the same. The shoe that you have should stay the same. The amount of mass in your shoe should stay the same. Your spring scale should stay the same, okay? After you guys are going to take some measurements, you have a couple different trials for your recording of force, and then you're going to find the average. Uh, remember, divide, add them all up and then divide. Then you've got, of course, um, a graph to create, your dependent, independent variables, constants. And then you should also have some questions on the back. As a reminder, you should have some helpful hints at the bottom for what types of things make a good graph. Make sure you're making the right kind of graph as well. Alrighty, so if there are any questions, we'll deal with that next. Otherwise, let's get started.